All right, let's pick up where we left off from the previous lesson and talk about the different type of perspective drawn. When our tutorials cover this type of perspective, they often just go over the basics. But I will try to delve deeper into each perspective type and draw as many examples as possible while focusing on the unique outcome of each perspective later on. The first type of perspective drawing is one point perspective. This is the easiest to work with, as you only have to deal with one vanishing point. To draw this, you need to first establish the horizon line, which can be placed anywhere for now. We will later discuss different heights of the horizon line in a different lesson. Next, we add the vanishing point. In one point perspective, we only have one vanishing point, which doesn't have to be in the center. It can be moved along the horizon line anywhere you want. But for now, let's put it in the middle. And here we have a 2D rectangle that we want to convert into a 3D object. To do this, we connect the perspective lines from each corner of the rectangle toward the vanishing point. This allows us to see how each side will be affected by the perspective. However, our box currently has no end, as it extends endlessly into the horizon. To close it off, we simply decide how far we want it to go and draw another version of the rectangle, connecting it to the four perspective lines that are further away from the initial one. Finally, we connect the two rectangles to get our new box in perspective. A very easy process to convert a 2D drawing into a 3D form. We can try again by drawing two different rectangles at a different level this time. One at the center of the horizon and one above it. The process is the same as before. We connect the perspective lines, then decide where we want it to end and draw another rectangle there. Finally, we connect the two together to get our boxes. One thing to note is that the one point perspective, the width or the x axis of the object is parallel to the horizon line. And the height, the y-axis, is simply a vertical line or parallel to the height line. This only applies to the one-point perspective. In other types, it will be different. So here we have to convert the 2D drawing into 3D using the horizon line, one vanishing point, and perspective lines. It's very easy and simple to do. Now let's make things a bit more complicated by using two vanishing points. We start the same way, by adding the horizon line and then adding two vanishing points instead of one. It's always a good idea to place them distance apart from each other. As the closer they are, the more distorted the forms will be between them. We will cover this in more detail later. To draw the base of the box, we can't use a rectangle like we did in the one point perspective, as the horizontal lines cannot be parallel to the horizon line. Instead, they have to recede into the vanishing point on each side. However, the height of the object will be aligned with the height line, so we can start with that line. From the top and the bottom of this line, we can connect back to the vanishing point on each side. This will give us the two edges of the box on the left and the right. We can then decide how wide we want the box to be and mark it with a vertical line on each side. Next, we do the same for the two vertical lines, connecting them to the furthest away vanishing points, since they are already connected to the adjacent point. With that, we have all four edges of the box. The only thing left is to connect the final height line in the back at the intersection between the perspective lines. And with that, we have our box in a two-point perspective. It might be confusing at first, but the more you do this, the easier it will become. Let's start doing two more boxes in different places, one at the horizon line and the other one above it. First, we connect the lines to each vanishing point. Then decide how wide we want each box to be we can be very accurate with the distance, but we will talk about that later. For now, let's make an arbitrary choice of width of each box. From the marked line we added, we connect to the opposite vanishing points to get the box in between. The last thing we do is to connect the fourth vertical line in the back and we are done. Here are all three boxes in different locations within the two-point perspective. Now let's add another level to the complexity and move on to the three-point perspective. In the three-point perspective, we don't have any vertical or horizontal lines. The only thing we have is the horizon line, two vanishing points on that horizon line, and a third point either above or below the horizon line. In this example, the point is below the horizon line. It doesn't have to be in the center, but being in the center will make it easier for this example. All vertical lines have to point at the third point below. So if I draw a line exactly above the point, it will be vertical. But if I draw a line to the left or the right of it, it will be slanted toward that point. From this line, we connect to both vanishing points on the horizon like we did before. This time, we decide the width of the box by connecting the top and the bottom edges of the third vanishing point below. Here is where you see the difference in perspective types. The lines will not be vertical on both sides as they connect toward the vanishing point, like we did before in the one and two point perspective. 
Next, we connect those lines to the opposite vanishing points. Finally, we connect the final edge in the back between the two intersections. And here we have a box in a three-point perspective. In one-point perspective, we have a vertical and horizontal line initially decided. In the two-point perspective, we have vertical lines initially decided. And in the three-point perspective, we only have a point where the vertical line leans toward. There are even more complicated types of perspective, of course, like the four-point perspective, also known as the fish islands. Uh, we can go to five or six or, or do an isometric view we will talk about later. But we don't usually use this perspective to draw everyday objects. But it's good to learn the construction of just in case you want to use it later. It might be difficult at first, but once you understand how it works, you will see that it's just the same concept as the previous one with an extra step. To draw a box in a four-point perspective, we start with the horizon line and two vanishing points on it, just like before. But we also have a third vanishing point below as the previous perspective type, and now a fourth vanishing point on the opposite side to the top. To connect the object to the fourth point without breaking it in half, we have to curve the object toward the top and the bottom points. This is why we have a curved line instead of a straight one. To draw a box in a four-point perspective, we start by adding a vertical line in the middle. This line will be vertical since we are at the center and it connects to the top and bottom vanishing points. We can then connect it to the two vanishing points like we did before to determine the width of the box. Once we decide the width of the box, you can connect it to the top and the bottom vanishing points using a curved line. You can either follow a grid you made before shown here in green or draw a curved line from the fourth point all the way to the third point, connecting the width points of the box. To determine the curvature of that line, you have to follow a spherical grid between all vanishing points. Imagine that there is an ellipse or a circle encompassing all four points together, a full sphere, and its sections all the way around in equal segmentations. It will be vertical in the center and curved all the way to the edges. And this is how you know how much to curve your line. Once you have the edges of the box, you can now do what we did before and connect these lines to the horizon line and the vanishing points. These lines will be straight, of course, especially to the first and second vanishing points. The last step is to connect the back vertical line, which should also be slightly curved toward the third and fourth vanishing points. And with that, we have a box in a four-point perspective. Let's try more boxes in different positions, one at the center and one above the horizon line. I will start with the first curved line, following the perspective grid. From there, I will connect to the horizon vanishing points. Then I will decide the width of the box and connect it to the top and bottom vanishing points using curved lines. We will then connect those lines to the horizon line and finally connect the fourth vertical line in the back. And here we have all of our boxes in a fish islands perspective. Again, you won't be using this perspective a lot but it's always fun to try it out. There's also a five point perspective, a six point perspective and so on. But the more points there are, the more complicated it will get and the less usable it will be for us. However, there are other type of perspective as well, such as isometric perspective, which is often used in pixel games and strategy games and mostly the tabletop mobile games. So it might be useful to learn how to draw this kind of perspective. Usually in an isometric perspective, we are looking down at the object. It can go the other way, but mostly we are using a bird's eye view from the top. So in this perspective, the horizon line doesn't really matter, and you will see why later. To start, all vertical lines will be 100% vertical, like we saw in the two-point perspective, because the isometric view is mostly a two-point perspective view. Here is where it will be a bit different. When we connect the top and the bottom points to the horizon line, we connect it with two parallel lines at a 30 degree angle. This angle can change depending on the distortion you want. If you make it a 45 degree, the distortion will be higher. Once we draw the parallel lines, we can decide how wide the box should be. It can be symmetrical or rectangular, it's up to you. From the new lines, we connect to the opposite side in the same way, with a 30 degree angle in the parallel fashion. Finally, we connect the back side of the box and get our box in an isometric perspective. You can see from the proportions that this box will look the same wherever you move it in perspective. And that's why I said earlier that the horizon line doesn't matter in isometric perspective because it's not a true perspective. It's more of a, an idealistic version that we usually cannot see with our own eyes. But it is used a lot in video games because it makes it much easier to draw these dimensions of an object no matter where you put it on the grid. A box in the bottom will look the same size and dimension as the one on the top and so on. 
So those are the top perspective types. As I said, there are many more, but these are the most used in the industry. We will go deeper later on each type and, and do way more examples than just throwing a box here and there. It will get more and more difficult as we go on. So you have to start practicing these easy ones as you go up the difficulty level. Before we wrap up this lesson, let's do a few more exercises on each view just to hammer down the basics one more time and give you an idea on how you can practice this yourself at work. So this is like a demonstration slash homework if you want. Let's start with the first one, the one point perspective. Here we have a horizon line in the middle with three points, but we will deal with each one as its own perspective. So let's start with the rectangle. As I mentioned, we will have the vertical and horizontal lines locked in this type of perspective. And we can move it around if you want, of course, in the same size and position. Now let's say we have three points here and we will draw one box for each point, starting with the one in the middle. I connect all the corners to the middle point. Decide the depth of the box and connect another rectangle. Finally, I outline the box in black and I'm done. Very simple. This is the one above the horizon line and connect it to the right point and create a very thin box. We do the same thing here. Draw the rectangle, connect our corners to the right point, decide the width, and connect another rectangle in the back. And we are done. Finally, let's draw one on the horizon line and connect it to the left point. Same process, a rectangle, connect the corners to the vanishing point, decide the depth, draw the far away corner and we are done. Okay, let's move on to the second type. We can remove the middle point and use the two points for our perspective. So here we have the vertical line given to us. So we start with the edge of the rectangle instead of the face. From it, we connect with both vanishing points, decide the width of each face. From the new lines, we connect to the opposite vanishing points and at the intersection, we get the fourth edge. All we have to do now is outline the box and we will have a box in a two point perspective. Let's do another one above the horizon line using the same technique. Start with the line, connect it to the points, decide the width, and connect the fourth edge. Finally, outline it, and you are done. Let's do another one, but this time more closer to one vanishing point than the other. The closer you are to the vanishing point, the more distorted your box will be from one side. We can hide the other boxes if things get a bit busy here by hiding the layer. We outline the box and we are done. Here are all three boxes in two point perspective. Let's do the three points now before we draw a box under the horizon line. So now let's draw another one above it. Also, let's move the third vanishing point slightly to the right. Now I only have one point to start with. From that point, we connect to the third vanishing point to get the vertical line. Now I can decide the length of the box and get the first edge. From that edge, I can connect to the vanishing points on the horizon line from both sides. Again, I decide the width of the face and connect it to the third vanishing point to get the back edges of the box. From these edges, I can connect to the opposite side and get the back side of the box. Finally, I add the fourth edge in the intersection between the two faces and get the final box. Let's outline it now. And here is the box in a three-point perspective with a tilted vanishing point. 
Now you have to be careful with how far you go from the center of the third vanishing point. When you are directly underneath it, you will get a slightly distorted box. But when you move far away from the third vanishing point and toward the first or the second vanishing point, things are going to get very, very distorted. And you will barely be able to see the edges of them. So when you decide to use the three point perspective, first make sure the third point is way up high, not on the canvas, but way up high or down. Not as close as this one in this scene. And don't move objects far away from the center if you want to have a decent three point perspective. The more area you use left or right the vanishing point on the top, the higher the third vanishing point should be, either up or down the horizon line. Let's do another example but with the third point being from the bottom. I can draw a whole pyramid as divided boxes using the same technique we talked about before and connect them toward the vanishing points. We will do more basic shape demonstrations later on but for now we can act like this is three boxes instead of a pyramid. Just three boxes on top of each other. And now we finally add the outline and we are done. And it's all done in three points perspective. Okay, let's do a four point perspective now, like we did before. We draw a spherical grid with four vanishing points. It's better to make this a symmetrical grid just to make things a bit easier for you. The more distorted the grid is, the worse the boxes in it will look. So here I make a quick circle using a pen. It may not be perfect, but it will have to do. You can of course draw a circle right away and then divide it between the third and fourth points all around and from the first and second points as well. But here I just want to demonstrate the idea behind the four point perspective. It is that the vertical lines will curve along the spherical grid while the horizontal lines will be straight toward the vanishing points. Once you understand this concept, this perspective will be a lot easier to do, no matter where you draw the object inside the grid. But one thing to be careful of is just like other perspectives, the closer you are to any vanishing point, the more distorted your objects will be. So if you want bigger scene, make sure that the grid is much larger than your canvas, and your objects are much smaller inside it. And here are the curved boxes in four point perspective. You won't find many paintings using this perspective, but if you ever want to do a fisheye scene, this is how you can build it up using this same grid. Finally, we have the isometric perspective. Honestly, I can get rid of the horizon line altogether here since we don't need it. As I mentioned before, it will mostly be seen from above. So we have the vertical lines given, as in every vertical line here will be straight, just like the two point perspective. That's why the isometric view is a two point perspective but with a vanishing point being so far away that the lines will be parallel to each other wherever you put them around the canvas. So we draw the vertical line 
Then we do a 30 degree angle from both corners on both sides. And now that I have the box, whenever I move it, it will be the same box everywhere. Now I can decide the width of it. Let's make it shorter on one side and do the same from these edges as well like we did before by drawing 30 degree angle from both sides. Now all I have to do is connect the final line and you will have a box. Let's now outline it and hide the grid. And here it is, a box in an isometric view. Now whenever I move it, it will be the same box in the same size. I can even clone it four times and remove the edges in between. And here we have a block of boxes. It's very easy perspective to get into with cleaner results. There is a whole genre of isometric drawing out there and I can see why people are fascinated with it. We can also draw another box with equal size this time. And again, move it around the whole scene, and it will fit everywhere. We can add it to the side or above the box we already did, and clean up the lines. And now we have them fit perfectly with other boxes. This is a lot of fun, you really should try it out. Draw as many basic objects as you can, or even just boxes in 1, 2, 3, 4, or isometric perspectives, and have fun with the exercise. Attach some of them together, or draw them on top of each other, and just have fun while you apply what you saw in this lesson. Before we conclude this lesson, I want to ensure that you grasp the complete concept of perspective by using 3D examples. By witnessing it in motion rather than the static drawing, you will have a better understanding for the situation. Let's start with the one point perspective. As we previously observed, there is a horizon line, a vanishing point, an object, and perspective line connecting the object to the vanishing point. As the box moves from one side to the other, you can observe how it affects the lines of the box and the perspective lines leading to the vanishing point. This provides clarity on how objects move in perspective while keeping the vanishing point stationary. Regardless of their size, the boxes will always have straight rectangles with straight horizontal and vertical lines, no matter how they are positioned in the perspective scene. Moving on to the two-point perspective, you can see how the box becomes distorted as it approaches the vanishing points. And depending on its position, you can either see the bottom or the top of the box as it moves up or down the horizon line. Remember, if you want to minimize distortion, it's advisable to keep the vanishing points further apart. The closer the vanishing points are to each other, the more distorted the perspective lines will be and of course the object or the box will be distorted as well. So to achieve less distortion, keep the objects away from the vanishing point and position the vanishing points at a greater distance from each other. Conversely, if you move the vanishing points far away apart, the object will appear more flattened. So for the right distortion effect, choose a position in between. Here we have different objects in two-point perspective, moving around in different sizes and shapes. Now let's explore the three-point perspective. When we move the box up and down, the shape changes depending on whether we see the top or the bottom of it. Additionally, the appearance of the object altered as we move closer or further away from the third vanishing point. We have different boxes here in three point perspective positioned to the left and right of the third vanishing point. Lastly, let's discuss the isometric view. As I mentioned earlier, the box appears the same regardless of its position within the scene. The grid remains consistent in size throughout the whole scene, and the boxes experience no distortion whatsoever. This makes isometric perspective an easy method to depict the 3D assets without any distortion. 
you can stack, move, and copy objects freely all around the scene. Hopefully, the setup demonstration in 3D made things a bit clearer to understand from a 3D point of view, along with the drawing session we did beforehand. But for now, we have to wrap this lesson up and move on to the next lesson where we're going to be tracing photos to find their 1, 2, 3 point perspectives. It's a good exercise to understand what we see in the outer world. So with that, we will stop here and pick it up in the next lesson. Don't forget to practice what you saw in this video so you can keep up with the upcoming lessons since they built upon each other and will get harder and more complicated as we move on. And as always, if you liked the lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I will try my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.